Miles' textbook for midwives, chapter 1, review of notes. It is work that carries great responsibilities and demands skills and knowledge of a high order, necessitating a thorough education and sound learning. Midwife, literally with woman. Star, wherever the female gender is used, the male is also implied where appropriate and vice versa. Quote, sound, end of quote, learning. Midwives see birth as a social event. International definition of the midwife. A midwife is a person who, having been regularly admitted to a midwifery educational program duly recognized in the country in which it is located, has successfully completed the prescribed course of studies in midwifery and has acquired the requisite qualifications to be registered and or legally licensed to practice midwifery. She must be able to give the necessary supervision, care, and advice to women during pregnancy, labor, and the postpartum period to conduct deliveries on her own responsibility and to care for the newborn and the infant. This care includes preventative measures, the detection of abnormal conditions in mother and child, the procurement of medical assistance, and the execution of emergency measures in the absence of medical help. She has an important task in health counseling and education, not only for the women, but also within the family and the community. The work should involve antenatal education and preparation for parenthood and extends to certain areas of gynecology, family planning, and child care. She may practice in hospitals, clinics, health units, domiciliary conditions, or in any other service. An independent practitioner. Box 1.2, Activities of a Midwife, the European Directive, UKC, C, 1994. Member states shall ensure that midwives are at least entitled to take up and pursue the following activities to provide sound family planning information and advice, to diagnose pregnancies and monitor normal pregnancies, to carry out examinations necessary for the monitoring of the development of normal pregnancies, to prescribe or advise on the examinations necessary for the earliest possible diagnoses of pregnancies at risk, to provide a program of parenthood preparation and a complete preparation for childbirth, including advice on hygiene and nutrition, to care for and assist the mother during labor, and to monitor the condition of the fetus and utero by the appropriate clinical and technical means, to conduct spontaneous deliveries, including where required an episiotomy, and in urgent cases, a breech delivery. To recognize the warning signs of abnormality in the mother or infant, which necessitate referral to a doctor and to assist the latter where appropriate. To take the necessary emergency measures in the doctor's absence, in particular the manual removal of the placenta, possibly followed by manual examination of the uterus. To examine and care for the newborn infant, to take all initiatives which are necessary in case of need, and to carry out where necessary immediate resuscitation to care for and monitor the progress of the mother in the postnatal period and to give all necessary advice to the mother on infant care to enable her to ensure the optimum progress of the newborn infant, to carry out the treatment prescribed by a doctor, to maintain all necessary records for a minimum of 25 years. Some of her tasks overlap with those of the nurse, while others are similar to those of the obstetrician and pediatrician. Assessment. Health is not simply an absence of disease and especially not a judgment about the normality of a person. It depends on context and on relationships and on the trust that a quote-unquote person can place in her body and herself. The midwife needs a deep perception of the influence of emotions and of the meaning of events for an individual in the light of that person's understanding and the priorities which emanate from her experience. Managing care. Midwifery is a balance between giving care and affirming the woman's ability to care for herself. 
very often it will be the woman herself who will administer the care and the midwife treats her as an equal. If not the senior partner in planning. Independent action. The midwife is the expert in normal midwifery and has an obligation to care for mothers and babies. In emergency situations, she is trained. While summoning medical aid to take immediate steps to treat mother or baby and to continue to give care while help is on the way and indeed after help arrives. Undertaking care prescribed by a doctor. The midwife is expected to interpret orders and if necessary, question or challenge. Remains a duty to continue caring for the mother and baby even when the doctor has taken charge. There remains a duty to continue taking care. There remains a duty to continue caring for the mother and baby even when the doctor has taken charge. Communication. Effective listening skills are essential and support of the individual will build the trust needed to allow expression of her feelings. Research awareness. As midwifery research grows year by year, it becomes increasingly important for the competent midwife to be alert to new knowledge, dot, dot, dot. More and more midwives are ready to investigate questions by undertaking their own local studies and audit procedures. Chapter six will help midwives to understand the research process and to evaluate research reports, while chapter eight gives a guide to quality control and audit. Keeping the law. Previously, page seven, a team member. The midwife must take the trouble to understand the roles of her colleagues and to develop harmonious relationships with them, LAS, as much as lies within her. Keeping the law, the practice of a midwife is controlled by law. Ethical issues. This includes matters such as maintaining confidentiality, maintaining and improving one's own professional competence. The midwife may find herself in a situation where her own values are challenged and she has to assist parents in choices which involve moral judgments. Chapter 5 provides a framework in which she may consider such difficult decisions. Responsibilities of the midwife. The unique status of the midwife brings tremendous satisfaction and reward. It also demands that she is accountable for her actions and it lays upon her great responsibility. Competence. Each midwife has a responsibility to maintain professional competence. The sphere of her practice is clearly laid down in the mid midwife's rules and the midwife's code of practice. 93 and 94. And it and is subject to the principles of the Code of Professional Conduct, 1992, UKCC, 1992B. As midwifery practice develops, there may be occasion to integrate new skills into the range of those that midwives use in order to meet the needs of mothers and babies. Page A, all records that are made by a midwife must be preserved for a period of not less than 25 years. The reason for this is that the record may be needed for the midwife's protection in cases of litigation or allegations of professional misconduct. Under the Congenital Disabilities Civil Liabilities Act 1976, a child may sue for damages where he has suffered as a result of negligence during his mother's pregnancy or labor, and this litigation may be delayed as long as 21 years after the events involved. Scottish law makes similar provisions. Responsibility to the family. As midwives are involved with very intimate aspects of the life of a family, they have a special duty to practice with absolute integrity. Confidentiality is of prime importance. Sensitive private matters must be handled with delicacy, and the midwife should value each individual without censure for beliefs or standards which may be at variance with her own. This does not mean that she does not use her judgment. She should constantly assess the needs of the mother and child within the family and may perceive a need for education or for warning of danger or for intervention on behalf of an unprotected member, such as a child at risk of abuse. In order to offer the best care possible, the midwife needs to keep her knowledge and skills up to date. She may tap 
resources beyond her own if the family requires other support, such as that of a social worker. Whatever the circumstances, a woman will need to be physically, society is subject to constant change. And the midwife is challenged to be flexible in order to adapt to change as it occurs. Whatever the circumstances, a woman will need to be physically safe, psychologically satisfied, and morally unoffended during pregnancy and childbirth, RCM 1987. Responsibility to the profession. Midwives have a responsibility for the image of their profession, for all to keep moving forward. Each individual must be sufficiently committed to play an active role in order to preserve standards and improve care. For some, this will mean initiating change or trying experiments. For others, it will mean following in the footsteps of the innovators. Professional involvement includes awareness of the activities of professional organizations and statutory statutory bodies. Current journals should be read as a matter of course. Discussion documents are often circulated for consultation and comment, and it is vital that midwives respond to requests for their opinions. All should become members of professional organizations. Some must be ready to accept office locally and nationally. Every midwife should use her vote in statutory body elections. A few are needed to have developed the knowledge and expertise to stand for election or accept appointment to a national board or committee. Dot, dot, dot. He also urges midwives to understand that research matters and that it is important to clarify who is a midwife without wasting resources on debates over who is a real midwife. This was uh, drawing midwifery issues to the attention of the public may necessitate use of the media and midwives should be ready to write to the newspapers or to take part in broadcast features when appropriate. There are some occasions when the best course of action is to lobby members of parliament and midwives made good use of the opportunity to do this during the hearings of the Select Committee of Health, which culminated in the Winterton Report, House of Commons, 1992. However, they need to understand that neither the media nor the politicians are waiting to take up their causes, since midwifery is but one of a huge range of interest groups who want their particular issue forwarded. D. Clark, 1994, stresses that midwives need to learn to communicate in ways that policymakers understand that it is easier to defend the status quo than to drive a new policy through, that the media care for but a short time, and that coalition building is essential. He also urges midwives to understand that research matters and that it is important to clarify who is a midwife without wasting resources on debates over who is a real midwife. Responsibility to the profession. Midwives have a responsibility for the image of their profession, for all to keep moving forward. Note, LAS, the greater good. Hmm. Quote, unquote, midwives enjoy the trust of the public. LAS quotes, as is the birth of an individual midwife. The birth of an individual baby is unique and unrepeatable. LAS, as is the birth of an individual midwife. At these times, the midwife is treading on delicate ground as she shares the pain of the parent's loss, but she may earn their gratitude for her support if she has been able to use her skills to comfort them and accept their feelings of grief. See chapter 33, page 10 of chapter 1. Meanwhile, midwives continue to attend five yearly statutory refresher courses, which are considered fully to meet the requirements. UKCC 1997B, all practitioners should be keeping personal profiles of their professional development, and the reader is advised to consult one of the many guides, e.g. Hull and Redfern, 1996, RCM Trust, 1995. Quote, LAS, I have an uneasy feeling about either owning, possessing the other. As in the midwife's client, or the mother's Midwife. 
thy stand as unto God. Chapter 2. Making notes on all practitioners should be keeping personal profiles of their professional development and the reader is advised to consult one of the many guides. Hole and Redfern, 1996, RCM Trust, 1995. Chapter 2, The Midwife's Client. Again, I have an uneasy feeling about either owning, possessing the other. Chapter 2. The midwife's direct client is the woman who, with her developing fetus and then her neonate, should remain the central focus of care. In this introductory chapter, the woman will be viewed as an individual, as part of a family, and within the wider social context as having personal, cultural, and religious needs, and across the range of ethnicity and equality. The aim of the chapter is to reflect on the childbearing process from the perception of the woman and to analyze the meaning of motherhood within contemporary society, thus assisting the midwife's understanding of her client. The, the chapter will initiate discussion of a range of issues and use a system of cross-referencing to subsequent chapters for further information. The intention is to provoke original thought whilst standing as an introduction to the whole. Childbearing as a whole, maybe, but comfortable pregnancy flies by or can. I now feel like the entire season of childbearing was but part of the vapor. In response to pregnancy is a long and very special journey. Miles, for a woman, it is a journey of dramatic physical, psychological, and social change of becoming a mother, of redefining family and relationships, and taking on the long-term responsibility for caring and cherishing a newborn child. Generations of women have traveled the same route, but each journey is unique, just as each mother and midwife are unique. Page 14. Thank you for being with woman, me, while I study, Lord. The mother has usually been represented in three ways. Historically, psychoanalytically and fictionally. A fourth dimension is currently under scrutiny by contemporary social scientists such as Oakley, that of the real-life mother, Kaplan, 1992. Adam was first form, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Whilst the production of a child was paramount, motherhood itself appeared irrelevant with the life of the woman viewed as secondary. The designated midwives were advised in midwives in semi-quotes, not sure what the single quotes are called, were advised to favor the infant in situations threatening life. I don't think that is true of the Hebrew midwives. And if a woman died during childbirth, burial on sacred ground was forbidden. Women were not permitted entry to the church, to find church, until around six to eight weeks after the birth and then were required to undergo a purification ceremony. Motherhood was seen by women as a burden to be endured with the knowledge that death was a likely outcome. Prolonged labor often resulted in maternal demise. This was contributed to by pelvic abnormalities pelvic anomalies resulting from rickets due to inadequate dietary intake of vitamin D, calcium, and phosphorus. The 1914 to 18 World War brought about some change in attitude and women became seen as saviors of the race, molding future generations on whom society's hopes rested. Richardson, 1993, in the original preface to Maternity Letters from Working Women, first published in 1915, 
The right Honorable Herbert Samuel wrote of the importance of forging improvements to help women during pregnancy and childbirth. The motivation behind this was to eradicate widespread suffering and to boost the population in the belief that the ideas for which Britain stands can only prevail so long as they are backed by a sufficient mass of numbers. Llewellyn Davies, 1978. In 1917, formation of the Women's Guild led to the demand that the care of the mother should have equal consideration with the care of the infant. Sylvia Pankhurst, the daughters of Emmeline, who went on to develop the women's suffrage movement, published Save the Mothers in 1930. She was appalled by the neglect of mothers' needs and called for a national maternity service. The 20th century has seen Western women evolve from the confines of a paternalistic society where restriction of the power of the mother was seen as a way of assuring the maintenance of patriarchy. The inception of the feminist movement led toward equality of opportunity, giving women the right to control their own destiny. With respect to pregnancy, this freedom was partly initiated by the introduction of maternity clothes in 1905, Simpkin 1996. Women no longer needed to remain confined out of sight. Artificial feeding shortly followed, heralded as the thing to do, but also offering women the ability to delegate some of the responsibilities associated with motherhood. Nursing a baby is central to mothering. Perhaps even the essence of motherhood. And it is a tragic and sad thing for a mother to not be able, for whatever reason, to successfully nurse her baby. This coincided with women seeking education and individual status. This coincided with the inception of the suffrage movement with women seeking education and individual status. However, motherhood and mothering remained primarily under the control of men such as Truby King, who wrote advice on child rearing during the 1920s. Later, amongst others, Dr. Benjamin Spock published his user-friendly advice on baby and child care in 1946. Revised editions of this remain a popular choice with some mothers today. LAS, because he was promoted? Question mark. By the 1960s, developments such as electronic fetal heart Rate monitoring were deemed to improve safety for both mothers and babies, and the British government led the move toward 100% hospital births. We know we now know that electronic fetal heart rate monitoring uh, has its cons. Perhaps outweighing the pros. And that may be an understatement. In addition, male doctors increasingly wrote the rules, not only for giving birth, but also for pregnancy. These rules frequently clashed with women's lived experience, resulting in them questioning whether to trust the authority of the doctors or the sensations of their own bodies. By the 1980s, women had begun to voice their opinions in the medicalization of childbirth, With its creation of an illusion of safety and the move back toward more natural childbirth followed, women started seeking to regain control of their own childbirth experience with consumer-led pressure groups such as the National Childbirth Trust and through media coverage. The joint action of women's groups, the midwifery profession, and sympathetic others has since been supported by the government publication Changing Childbirth, LAS, quote-unquote, Change the World. Traditionally, the power of the profession has dominated that of the woman. Appropriate non-medicalized language must be used in order to facilitate understanding and enable women to be empowered to make informed choices. Traditionally, the power of the profession has dominated that of the woman. And doctors were seen as holding the supreme power. No, that's God's.
Elias. Many individuals still view a doctor as unapproachable and may have extreme difficulty in asking questions. Even when women do seek answers, the way in which knowledge is imparted can be as important as the content of the information offered, and the tone of voice must be such that it avoids expression of an over-bias. It's simply awkward for a woman to have to ask personal questions of a stranger, which is not far from what most male doctors are in her life. A stranger with control over her body. That's scary. In order to break down potential barriers to empower and offer informed choice to women and their partners, balance is required with full liaison between concerned individuals, both professional and lay people. LAS quotes, character defines the true professional. The philosophy of contemporary maternity services is to be woman-centered and for the midwife to work in partnership with the client it is necessary to appreciate the multifaceted needs of individual women individual midwives las and rather than woman-centered if christ is the center the woman will be treated well the majority of human females are still nurtured with the inherent knowledge that their ultimate purpose is to become mothers, and at some stage in their re- reproductive lives, the desire to achieve this can become overwhelming. The meaning, uh, whilst a woman will seek and achieve other goals in her journey through life, she may still see motherhood as a pivotal point, believing that to remain childless somehow signifies failure at womanhood. A feminist viewpoint is that it is male dominance which has led to many women being convinced that unless motherhood is achieved, they are not truly women. Tong, 1989. The meaning of motherhood in contemporary society remains a contentious issue. The meaning of motherhood in contemporary society remains a contentious issue. Individual interpretation may include the nature or nurture debate, nature or nurture debate, and technological advances have raised further issues relating to the definition of a mother. Is the mother the woman who produces the egg which becomes fertilized or the woman who becomes pregnant by artificial implantation of the embryo and who subsequently gives birth to the infant? Is the woman who adopts the baby the mother? Is there a difference between the ability and function of a natural mother and receiving mother? Research is exploring some of these issues and no doubt the debate will continue. Page 17, if we had real debate, it wouldn't have to continue because truth triumphs rather quickly when allowed speech. Midwifery applicable. Uh, Individual women will vary in their expectations and needs during the childbearing process. Women are becoming more informed and able to access information, information not behind paywalls, that is. A woman may wish to have a relative or friend with her who is able to translate on her behalf, and it is important that this is not obstructed due to inflexibility of any unit protocols. A woman may wish to have a relative or friend with her who is able to translate on her behalf, and it is important that this is not obstructed due to inflexibility of any unit protocols. Everything should be reasonable. That's the general rule. Lord, deliver us from wicked and unreasonable men that have not faith. Language can be used as an instrument of power, and it is important that any lack of understanding is recognized to avoid the induction of fear and anxiety. Dot, dot, dot. It is vital to reflect upon the words used in front of women and their partners and ensure that appropriate language is used, thereby avoiding potential misunderstanding. Even 
backing up. Even where the midwife and her client both speak the same language, certain words or terms may be used which are unfamiliar to the woman. One example of this is the use of the expression flat baby for a neonate requiring resuscitation. The new parents, hearing such a reference to their baby, may imagine some gross abnormality and become extremely alarmed. It is vital to reflect upon the words used in front of women and their partners and ensure that appropriate language is used, thereby avoiding potential misunderstanding, expectations, and emotional response. During the childbearing process, stem from a combination of several factors, including theoretical knowledge, values and beliefs, and the accumulation of past experiences, LAS, midwifery applicable, expectations and emotional response during the childbearing process stem from a combination of several factors, LAS, this could be for the mother or the midwife, expectations and emotional response during the childbearing process stem from a combination of several factors, including theoretical knowledge, values and beliefs, and the accumulation of past experiences. This may also be affected by a woman's relationship with her own mother and her experience of being mothered. The requirement to make public any pre-existing medical or physical conditions or elements of personal past history for the good of this pregnancy and future infant will influence the woman's response and needs, as will the support and care she receives once pregnancy is confirmed. Unclear, LAS. Previous birth experiences tend to remain as deep memories, which often become more vivid in subsequent pregnancies. Simpkin, 1992, reflects that Women with positive long-term memories of that birth experience of their birth experiences tend to remember they felt in control. But are memories accurate? LAS, this is insulting. Just because a midwife a midwife's recollection differs from the mother's doesn't mean the midwife's memory is better. more vivid in subsequent pregnancy from her small longitudinal study her small longitudinal study of 20 women who were interviewed in 1990 in 1988 to 89 having given birth and completed questionnaires in 1968 to 1974 simpkin found that a lot of detail was lost over the time gap but specific incidents were clearly remembered such as timing of onset of labor, interventions, and certain significant information or actions. The significance attached to negative events tended to be intensified, whereas positive memories remain more static and accurate. Implies negative memories are less accurate. Or is it that we don't want that to be true? Painful truths should be or are undermined. It is important, therefore, that each woman is given the opportunity to discuss any past experiences which she feels may affect the way she develops her current expectations. There is arguably no other single life event that has such a profound effect as giving birth and as an event it is unsurpassed for the ripple effect which it in turn has upon society. The childbearing process may carry the potential for immense positive or negative impact on the individual's development as woman and mother and on the future of the children she brings into our world. Our world. Simpkin, 1996, LAS, The Greater Good.